Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who have joined us to offer our worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. 
Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated if you've been standing to participate in our worship service this morning. That's something that I like to stress. You're not just watching a worship service, you're participating in a worship service. So I hope you have your bulletin printed out so that you can follow along. If not, there is a, a link in one of the comments uh, on the Facebook post has a link to the, uh, to the bulletin so that you can uh, access that and follow along with our service. And I do want to uh, welcome everybody who is watching and participating. And I know uh, I've already seen a, a number of the comments uh, flood in on my screen. I don't get to see who's making the comments unless you identify yourself in the comment. Uh, I'll, I'll go back later and like all of them. But it's, it's great to see uh, people saying that they're here, they're watching, and uh, maybe where they're watching from. And uh, we have uh, some measure of fellowship and togetherness, even if it is just online. And then in terms of some other announcements, you might have noticed if, if you're trying to figure out what looks different this morning, uh, the altar is not in its usual spot because we had volunteers here uh, refinishing the floor of the chancel area where the, wall, uh, where the altar normally sits. And uh, so that's still, uh, that's still drying so that we can put everything back it was a lot cheaper to rent the equipment over the weekend rather than during the week which is why we did it that way and so we have been doing a number of things here at, uh, at the church to spruce things up with uh, all volunteer labor uh, so only the cost of uh, supplies uh, so when we do come back and you're going to see uh, a lot has uh, has been spruced up and uh, and it looks great there's uh, there's a number of you haven't seen the social hall floor yet even uh, for example which was finished just before all of this broke so we're looking forward to getting back together and thanks to our volunteers who are providing all that labor to us and giving of their time and uh, I want to thank you for your financial support uh, offerings are coming in, and we are in pretty good financial shape. We do ask to keep them coming. I really do appreciate uh, uh, the support as you um, mail in your offering or give electronically. And if you did donate for Easter lilies, you see we have a number of Easter lilies left, and this isn't even all of them. So if you had donated for one and you'd like to pick up your plant, you may do so during the week. And uh, then just a reminder, we'll be doing our worship services each Sunday morning at 11 o'clock until further notice. Uh, looking forward to the time when we can meet together again in person and resume our ordinary schedule. Uh, until that time, we continue to meet this way and wish you God's blessings and peace through, uh, through this difficult time when we're all uh, hunkered down in our homes. But now we continue our service with the readings from Holy Scripture. The first reading appointed for the second Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thutis rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished. And all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, 
you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day, in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Gospel 
according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Centered on God's word and sacraments in Christ, we share his truth and his love among ourselves and with the world. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come up nice and close to the screen. So I have a special message just for you. Glad that you're watching. I uh, hope that uh, maybe you're able to see our Little Lamb's Chapel time that we have uh, each week. And I talked about this on Friday, how uh, if, if I told you something that maybe didn't seem quite true, like if I told you that I could take a gallon of milk uh, and hold it, up above, hold it up above my head like this, you would say, well, of course you can. Sure, that's not a problem. What if I told you that I had a baby elephant at home and I was going to take that baby elephant and hold it up over my head? Then you would say, Pastor, I don't think so. First of all, I don't think you have a baby elephant at your house because who has a baby elephant at their house? Those are in a zoo or out in the wild in Africa. And even if you did, a baby elephant, even though it's a baby, it's pretty big, you wouldn't be able to lift it up over your head You'd want to see it with your own eyes before you would believe me. You'd think, Pastor, you're just telling a, you're telling a story. That's make-believe. You're making things up. 
Well, that's what Thomas thought when the other disciples came to him and said, Thomas, we've seen Jesus and he's alive. Thomas said, no, that doesn't make any sense. How could Jesus be alive? I saw him die. I know he has nail marks in his hands from where they nailed him to the cross. And he has a hole in his side from where they stabbed him with a spear to make sure that he was dead. There's no way that you saw it. But then a week later, and here we are a week after Easter, when we celebrated that Jesus rose again from the dead. Now the disciples were gathered again, and this time Thomas was with them. And here comes Jesus and said, Thomas, don't doubt, believe. But you know what? It shows that Thomas was thinking. He knows what can happen and what can't happen. Nothing like this had ever happened before, and nothing like it has happened since. This is a once-in-history type of thing. That Jesus, the Son of God, came to be our Savior. He did die on a cross, but then he came back alive. The, the disciples saw it, and even Thomas saw it, and Thomas believed. Thomas, who was hard to convince before. And so it would be just like if you saw me at my house with a baby elephant, you'd say, wow, I don't believe it, but there it is. Well, I'll tell you, that is just a story. That's make-believe. And we hear lots of stories that are just make-believe. But this is something that really happened. We can know it, we can believe it, and we can trust it. It shows how God loves us so much that he gave his son so that we could have life in his name. So let's thank him for that. Dear God, we thank you that you did send Jesus to be our Savior, to give us hope even in the midst of difficult times, hard times. We know that you are always with us, that we have life that lasts forever because of who you are and what Jesus has done for us. When we have trouble believing, help us remember that you are the one who overcomes all doubts, that even Thomas believed, and that we can know that you are God and that you raised Jesus and you will be with us to get us through all the days of our lives and even into eternal life that lasts forever with you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. All right, thank you very much. We're going to continue now with our next hymn. It's the first four verses of O Sons and Daughters of the King as it's printed in your bulletin. Peace be unto you this day 
from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's sermon is the Gospel reading appointed for this second Sunday of Easter from John chapter 20, especially verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. This is the text. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A week has passed since Easter, and not much has changed. We're still participating in virtual worship through a screen. But signs of unrest are growing as the pandemic stretches into its second month. And Americans are expressing their displeasure with the extent of restrictions that have been imposed in some states. Residents of Michigan drove to the state capitol this past week to create an intentional gridlock in order to protest their governor's decision to forbid the sale of things such as house paint and garden seeds, even at stores that were open to sell groceries and other approved items. In Kentucky, some residents attended Easter services at their churches last Sunday in spite of the threat that their license plate numbers would be taken down and they would be required to be quarantined for 14 days. Today's first appointed scripture reading from Acts chapter 5 was not chosen with any of this in mind. But verse 29 is the proof text that is used to justify civil disobedience by Christians. Ordinarily, we are supposed to obey earthly governments, as Jesus himself says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And Romans chapter 13 says that Christians should submit to the governing authorities because they have been instituted by God in order to promote peace and order in the world. And the Apostle Paul goes on at some length there to say that we should pay taxes if we owe taxes and pledge allegiance if we owe allegiance, etc. However, our submission is not absolute. And just as Daniel defied King Darius when he outlawed prayer, if the government prohibits something God commands or requires something God forbids, then our rallying cry is to echo Peter and the apostles in Acts 5.29, saying we must obey God rather than human beings. It is a serious matter to invoke this principle, and we must not do it lightly. Now, in our country, the government is of the people, by the people, for the people. So we bear some of the responsibility in shaping the laws. And orderly procedures exist for changing unjust laws. The protest in Michigan, for the most part, was conducted in line with social distancing guidelines from the CDC and doesn't really fall under the category of civil disobedience, but rather the constitutionally protected right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. In Kentucky, many of the people said that they were standing up for their right to freely practice their religion, which is admirable. Although our position from the beginning of the pandemic has been that it would only be an attack on religion if churches were singled out for closure. But bars and restaurants and sporting venues have also been shut down. As Pastor Lee Cakes, the president of our Atlantic District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, has said, the government hasn't told us that we cannot preach the gospel, which is what happened in Acts chapter 5, only that we cannot gather together in a manner that would be unsafe. 
And so we are loving our neighbor by preventing the spread of the virus, even as we find new and creative ways of proclaiming the good news of salvation in Christ Jesus. As another example, we would not invoke freedom of religion and continue to meet in a church building that had been legitimately condemned according to uniformly applied building codes. To do so would be dangerous. Instead, we would find another place to meet. In our present situation, that other place is the safety of our own homes. And as countless people were pointing out leading up to last week's holiday, that is not unlike the first Easter, when the disciples were staying behind closed doors. The danger outside was completely different, but in some respect the sense of isolation must have been the same, and the uncertainty. On that Sunday evening, they had gathered together in support of one another, but they had the doors securely locked. But that did not stop Jesus, who came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. If you were hoping for some kind of explanation of how exactly that happened, you're not going to get it from the Bible. Was he able to pass through the door? Did he sort of teleport in? It doesn't say. Just rather matter-of-factly states, Jesus came and stood among them, despite the doors being locked. And immediately he says, peace be with you. Because that would be pretty unsettling. John tells us, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Before that, they were shaken up, as Luke's account tells us. At first they thought it was a ghost, a spirit. But he proved to them that he was flesh and blood. All attempts to explain away the disciples' experience fall flat. It was not a mass delusion or wishful thinking or an imposter. But Jesus Christ himself, still bearing the marks of the nails and the spear, overcoming all their doubts and even the healthy skepticism of Thomas, who only demanded the same evidence that the others had claimed to have seen, demonstrating that the disciples were not a bunch of gullible dolts who were ready to believe the unbelievable. It was the physical presence of their resurrected Lord that convinced them. And so, what now? What do we do with the power of someone who cannot be stopped even by death? Start an uprising? Overthrow the government and set up our own kingdom? No. Jesus breathes on them. All of this power and Jesus breathes on them. Right now, we don't want anyone breathing on us, do we? Don't even breathe near us unless you're wearing a mask because your breath might carry something unseen that would infect us and sicken us and possibly kill us. So maybe we understand that breath can be powerful. And the breath of Jesus did carry something unseen to the disciples. Not a deadly virus but the life-giving Spirit of God. 
Receive the Holy Spirit, he says. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. The power of life over death, transmitted by a word, as it communicates the purpose for which Jesus had come. As he says, as the Father sent me, even so, I am sending you. God seeks to reconcile the fallen world to himself. So his son gives his life on the cross as a sacrifice for sin and then rises victorious on the third day. Now his followers are sent to spread the good news that sin is atoned for and we are restored as children of our Heavenly Father. But in so doing, Christ has moved us from the seen to the unseen. The risen Jesus stood there right before their eyes, convincing even Thomas. There was proof. But now we need faith. Faith that the spoken word accomplishes God's purpose to forgive sins and reconcile us to him. Faith that believes in spite of the struggles that we face, whether related to the virus or the economy or something more personal. And trusts that God is still at work and that there is hope. As our epistle reading for today from 1 Peter puts it, it is a living hope into which God has caused us to be born again through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept safe in heaven for us, even as God's power guards us through our most difficult times so that we can rejoice in the midst of trials, seeing how these refine and purify our faith. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed, Jesus says. And Peter adds, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Though we are quarantined, though we are under orders to stay at home, the word of God is not bound. Still the message goes out through videos that are broadcast, through encouraging emails and text messages and Facebook posts that are shared. Still we find ways to love and serve our neighbor, and so to obey God. Just let them try and stop it. Better to heed the advice of Gamaliel, who said, So in the present case, I tell you, Keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. Nothing stops Jesus, not even death. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now with verses 5 through 8 of the hymn of the day.
is played, we invite you to take the time to reflect on God's word, to have a time of personal prayer, and also to take the time for a virtual gathering of the offerings, whether you mail that in to us, bring it by, or use online giving, which is available from our website or through your bank.
God, Heavenly Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has defeated even death. So we know that you have the power of life over death, of forgiveness over sin. You have reconciled us to yourself by the atoning work of Jesus on the cross. and By his victorious resurrection from the grave, we know that we too will rise to live forever with you, that there is hope beyond this life for everlasting life, hope that sustains us and gets us through even our most difficult times. We pray that you would remove from us all doubts, work through your means of grace, especially through your word that is proclaimed, that we would know and believe and trust in Jesus as our Savior, and that nothing can stop him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayers then on behalf of this entire situation with the coronavirus pandemic. We give you thanks, O Lord, for slowing the spread and flattening the curve. Even if some do not recognize it or acknowledge that you are behind it, you worked through our efforts. We thank you for all that individuals have done, that organizations have done. But in the end, we rely on you to bring healing, to bring safety to us. We pray that you would continue to watch over those who are going to work each day in essential industries and putting themselves at risk. We pray for medical professionals and all who work in hospitals. We pray for those who are supplying grocery stores and making sure that shelves are stocked and that people are checked out. For truckers as they travel the roads and bring the things we need. For farmers and food processors who are working to make sure that we have food. Watch over them all. And especially then in this time of uncertainty for those who have not been able to go to work, for those whose businesses are shut down, for those who fear losing their job or are already unemployed, we pray that you would guard and protect them. We pray that you would give us the resources to be able to help those who are in need. And so finally also we pray for all of our leaders in making decisions at all levels of government, especially we pray for President Trump and for Governor Cuomo and all state governors, for medical advisors, and for all who are seeking to make decisions in this time. Give them wisdom and knowledge. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for others who are sick or suffering in any way, and for specific cases of the virus that are known to us, we pray for Annalise Petershagen, who is recovering from a fall and experiencing pain and discomfort after her injury. We pray that you would bring healing to her. We pray for Allison Smith's father, George Grimm, as he is seriously ill in a nursing home in Michigan. We pray for Dawn Hammond's mother as she has begun chemo for lung cancer. For Amy Craycraft's father, Richard Alftenberg, who has multiple health issues, including kidney stones and prostate cancer requiring upcoming surgery. We pray for Cindy Parisi's father, Reverend William McCabe, who has been diagnosed with the virus. And we pray for one of our Sunday school parents, John Polstein, whose battle with the coronavirus has exposed other serious health issues, including a spleen and kidney damage. Lord, he was improving for a time, uh, which gave us some hope. Now he is declining and will be transferred to Westchester Medical Center today. We pray that you would watch over him, bless doctors and nurses as they care for him, grant peace of mind to his family and all who uh, watch over and hope and pray. We pray for restoration of health in accordance with your will. We pray for your peace that passes all understanding as we place our hope and our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially in this holiday season when we have joy, want to experience that joy, we pray that you would remind us that it is because of 
because death comes to us all, that we have hope beyond this life. That is what this holiday is about, to know that Jesus has risen and that he gives us eternal life. And so although we mourn, although we grieve, we are sad because of a loss, because loved ones are no longer with us, we do not grieve as those who have no hope, because we have the hope that you have given us in Christ Jesus, that there is victory over death and the grave, that there is life after death, an eternal life spent with you. And so even in the midst of our sorrow, we pray that you would give us this hope and your peace and comfort. We pray especially for the Simcoe family at the death of Christie's aunt, Marilyn Helprich. We pray for Donna Saxton and other friends and the families of Robert Knauer and Philip Matrician Sr. And for all who grieve, we pray that we who have known Christ's resurrection from the dead would have this hope to know that the inheritance is unfading, is unperishable, and is being kept safe, guarded in heaven for us until the day that our everlasting salvation is revealed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayers of thanksgiving this day as we celebrate with those who give thanks, especially at the birth of Brady Reeker to Dawn Mangan's daughter, Heather. We thank you for keeping mother and child safe through a long and difficult labor and delivery. Thank you that this little one has been revealed to the world. Pray that you would watch over his life by your grace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless our mission of the month for April, which was chosen by ballot months ago to be Fishkill Food Pantry. And as the news tells us that many food pantries are running low on their supplies as people are out of work, people have lost income and wages, uh, some supply lines are uncertain, we pray that you would bless Fishkill Food Pantry and all the food pantries across the country, that they would be able to minister to people who are in need, to pr help provide each day daily bread, and so to glorify you, the giver of all good things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And bless those celebrating their birthdays this week. We pray for Tyler, Eli, Karen, Paul, Laura, Finn, and Madeline. We thank you for another year of life that you've granted them by your grace. We pray that you would be with them and all of us, that we would Rejoice with each day of life that you have given us, even in difficult times. That no matter what we face, to be able to say that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lead us to give thanks for all the blessings you have given us. Give us strength to meet the challenges, knowing that you have overcome even death itself. As we continue to celebrate Christ's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.